Hello folks, tonight I'm going after Malat 15, and that's an interesting name, I never saw that before, but I guess that's what they call it. It's actually the heart of the heart nebula, and I'm, I'm not going to use my wide field scope, I'm not going to capture the whole heart nebula, I'm just going to zoom in close to that center area, because there's a lot of detail in there, if you can zoom in on it, I'm going to use my new refractor of course, and it's going to need a lot of data, and right now I, I'm using HA, and you can see my mean readout is almost double what it normally is. The sky is not great right now. There's a lot of, and there must be haze if my, if my mean readout is this high, because usually it, it's half that in the 500 range. So uh, I'll probably have to go picture by picture and see which ones I need to throw out. No, so that's not cool. Usually I try to keep everything. Um, so let's take a look at one raw image. Okay, so you can see there, there's the heart of the heart. There, there's that little indentation for the heart. It's Maybe it's hard to see right now because it, it looked better before. Uh, so obviously, I think this picture got hit with some haze. Oh, shucks. But, um, oh, I, I just heard my, my auto-guiding beep. So there's definitely some clouds up there. But even though the, the moon is gone, and I had a lot of fun last time the moon was gone, capturing all those galaxies with broadband, uh, this time, even though the moon's gone, I'm sticking with narrowband because the broadband objects I still want to capture, you know, the Pleiades, Orion, the Horton, it's still too early for those. They rise too early in the morning, and I, I would have to wait for them. So I'm going to stick with narrowband for a while. I, I feel like I'm on a roll right now with narrowband anyway, with with all those top picks I've been getting lately, so I'm going to go. I got the hot hand right now, and I'm going to stick with it. So um, I'll be back later. So here's what my guiding looks like right now, 0 0.74, 0 0.71. Um, the seeing conditions, I, I don't think they're very good right now. The guiding is a little weird. Um... Before the my mean readout was higher than normal. It's kind of like last night. It, it, it's skies aren't perfect, even though when you look up, they look perfect, but they're not. But um, I guess if the guiding can stay in this range for now, it, uh, I'll take it. Okay, I'll see you later. This is probably going to be a two or three night project. See you later. Okay, after two nights of collecting data, I think I am finished. And sorry, I know I, I sound bad today. I've got a bad cold, I guess, staying up late and working on this stuff for the past four nights with that other object, the, the fish head, and now this. It's just running me down, and I think it's going to be clear again tonight. I, I don't even know what I'm going to capture tonight. But let's take a look at my data. Uh, this is five hours of HA. This is uh, five hours of oxygen and four hours of sulfur. And I know the oxygen, uh, I usually have that brightness around the edges if there's not a lot of signal coming in. And, but I did pick up some good data, I, I guess, in the middle here. And you can see the sulfur did pick up um, almost all around the, the field of view. So that, that's pretty good. And I felt, you know what, I, I guess I have enough data to work with. And it was interesting with the sulfur data. I was comparing two hours worth of data to four hours worth of data. And I barely even saw a difference. I was going to capture five hours and all. But if I barely saw a difference between two and four hours, I just quit that filter after four hours. So, and I think I had enough. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't prepared to go at 20 hours or more like I've seen other people do on this object. I haven't graduated to that level. 14 hours is about my limit on a particular object. And then I, uh, I combined it two different ways. Uh, one way was it pr produced more green, and, and another way produced this. And I bet a lot of people would prefer to work with the one on the right. But I prefer um, a lot of green in my combine because then I can mask off the green. Maybe, you know, mask it off and color mask in Pixinsight or use selective color in Photoshop. Uh, it, I actually went with using selective color in Photoshop. 
and uh, let me show you what I came up with. Uh oh, I hear somebody sending me a message on Facebook. But that's what I ended up with. Um, and you can see I just little by little peeled away the green, made it more blue. Uh, I, I turned this area here a little more gold and I tried to sharpen up the along the edges. So I, I kind of like the way it turned out. Uh, there's a lot of really good examples in Astrobin. People do, who spend 30, 40 hours, it's incredible. But I still like the way mine turned out. I can live with this. And uh, I didn't even run a color calibration on this. I, I normally do a color calibration, but um, I don't think I needed to, really. I thought I skipped that step. And, uh, well, that's all I've got to share. i got to find a new object to work on tonight. I think it's going to be clear all night long. All right. That's all I got. Thanks, everyone. See you later.